we have had, um, I think it, as, especially if you're starting your own business or even in just in your career in general, there are sometimes those inner blocks, that negative talk that hold us back or are still holding us back. What would you consider yours to have been or are still are your inner blocks? Oh, yeah. What makes you think you can do this? Mm-hmm. I get that all the time. Mm-hmm. So I just like, well, so what makes me think I can't? I mean, I just take the opposite of that. Born in the heartland in 1959, Pam is a recovering environmental attorney whose destiny was to be an entrepreneur honoring her commitment to the environment. Her first entrepreneurial venture was creating Nature's Rubbish, a yard waste hauling company serving metropolitan Kansas City, Missouri. After she sold NR to her operations manager, Pam worked for her husband at Creative Candles. It was during this time she was inspired to be the founder of Twirled and realized the value of domestic manufacturing. Twirl's tagline is weaving lives together. There have been three collections manufactured by Twirl, a gift line, reusable PPE gear, and patient's apparel, labor and delivery tops, skirts, and front closing patient gowns with pockets. In addition to her devotion to Twirl, Pam feels blessed to be to support her parents as well as her daughter, son-in-law, and three grandchildren. This December, Pam and her husband will be celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary. It is my pleasure to welcome Pam as one of my guests for the Love Your Mission, Inspiring Women. Mm -hmm. Pam, it is so good to see you. I am glad that you have agreed to be part of this Inspiring Women's Interview Series with Love Your Mission. So thank you. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here with you today. Well, good. Thank you. All right. So let's uh, let's get started. So what is something that you're celebrating today? Oh, wow. Right now, things are really popping. Um. So as far as business pursuits are concerned, Twirl pivoted um, during COVID. Mm -hmm. And so we are back to working on our heritage and staying in that. So I am celebrating, well, first of all, I'm celebrating that our family really made it through the pandemic. And so I'm celebrating that I'm celebrating friends and family who have also been relatively unscathed. I know we all took an impact and my heart goes out to those that have lost and how we get to, as a world, show up to be together for one another. That's beautiful. Absolutely. And I could absolutely relate. I'm in currently in, I'm not at home. I'm actually in Texas right now. And uh, oh. even though we came for a sad time because uh, we had a death in the family, it was still nice to be able to be able to see the family again, because it's mm-hmm. been over a year, just like, you know, like most people have. And so right. it was, so it was lovely to be here during the fourth and to be able to celebrate that. So absolutely understand that. Okay. So wonderful. Oh, okay. good. So, um, as you know, um, I am a career coach, and so I help women who are trying to determine what they're going to do. They're at a fork in the road and trying to figure out what it is that um, they're going to do next. So, for you, what are three things you wish you had known when you first started working? Okay. So, I have one that have had three careers, really. <laughs> Yes. And so um, I think, I honestly think if I had trusted myself mm-hmm. and listened to my heart's calling, I would not have had three distinct careers because right now, and um, right now I'm truly following my inspiration and my heart. Mm. as to how I, what I want to do. I want to create a legacy. I want to create a legacy. 
and I'm on a mission for that. And I want to be a servant leader. Mm -hmm. And so I'm following that journey. That's beautiful. Love that. So as you, as, well, why don't, why don't you take us on your career journey? So okay. yeah, let's, let's. Okay. Okay. I'd be glad to. So um, there's a drawing my mom say from my preschool that I wanted to be an attorney, just like my dad. Okay. So I was, I was singularly focused on being an attorney because my dad is such a man of integrity. And I, that's just, I just took that on. And I'm thrilled I pursued the law profession. However, however, I was a born entrepreneur. Mm. And when I started um, on the path, when I was of what that would look like, I limited my vision of what an attorney entrepreneur looked like. And I just really focused on traditional being an attorney, but Truly, right out of law school, I created my first entrepreneur venture. Mm -hmm. And I rode that wave, and it was so much fun. And I limited it, quite honestly, to accommodate our family dynamics. So I didn't shoot for the moon because I wanted to be available and accessible. And in the same vein, if I'm going to be fully transparent, I was accommodating my husband's career choices. Yes, yes. And many women do that. Yeah. I did not know what it looked like to create what I'm going to call the both and of having him go for his dreams and me going for my dreams at the same time. I know it's possible. And I wish I had really known that it was possible. 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. That's yes. That, that whole uh, part of deciding. Yeah. Do we go with that? And, and sometimes we do, we think that, no, that their job, they need to do it. We got to support them. We got to take care of the kids or we have to do this, et cetera. Yeah. And uh, instead of focusing that, no, you can't actually do both. Right. I, I mean, I totally accommodate it. And I'm not, I'm not being in victim mode here. I mean, I'm, I hope I'm not sounding like I'm in victim You're mode. Not. And I didn't have to be accommodating to that degree. I know that there are compromises that a family can make. I never asked my husband to accommodate. Mm-hmm. I, took, I took all that accommodation on myself. Yeah. Isn't that part of women and being sometimes that nurturing and that we need to step behind or, or not step behind, but we need to step to the side or we need to let it allow others to shine before us. Absolutely. Yeah. And what I've learned, and this is a big lesson, mm-hmm. that when I dim my light, All that happens is the world's not as bright. Yes. Love that. So, yeah. Yes, absolutely. So you mentioned your dad um, during part of your journey. What, and maybe not your dad, maybe it's also your mom or or someone in your family. What, if any other influence did you get or learn from them that you're still using now? Well, So um, when you speak of my parents, my dad saw possibilities. Um, It was my mom that really, um, the life lessons, and I want to say they didn't always serve me. Okay. Because she was coming from, don't work so hard. Why are you pushing yourself? My father never said to me, don't challenge yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I was the only daughter. Maybe if I had another, if there were a sister, that child would not have taken the message the same way, but that's how I heard that message. 
And it didn't serve me because I'm in my happy place when I take, when I challenge myself. And it doesn't feel like working hard for me. It just, it doesn't. Yeah. Because you're enjoying what you're doing in, in this. And what would you consider has been your most challenging? Because you said you had three careers, essentially. What, uh-huh. uh, what, what was the most challenging for you? Probably not seeing my blind spot. Uh, here, I wanted to achieve these things. And I was not recognizing that I was the only one that truly limited my own results. So when I woke up to that, then it was not a struggle any longer. And how about, what would you consider your most proud? Um, Oh, keep going. Keep going. (laughs) Yeah, because Right. I mean, there's so many analogies to a marathon. It's the first step, but it's the completion. Like, just keep going. It doesn't matter if you finish a marathon. Well, it's awesome if you finish it in three hours and whatever to set world records. I'm not taking anything away, but the courage of that person that it took 18 hours to complete. Oh my gosh. Those are the people I celebrate. Yes. Because they kept going. They were committed to crossing the finish line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Regardless of how long it took, it was still getting there in that journey of getting to, to that finish line, even right. with the ups and downs that, that, that it happens. Absolutely. Yeah. I love yeah. It. So um, as I mentioned, I work with women and sometimes they're very, um, I help them get clarity on what it is that they want to do when they're at the crossroad of their career. But sometimes there's confusion that occurs between what a career is, what a vocation is, what their higher purpose is. So career is what you make or where you make the money. The vocation is using your, your, your unique and brilliant gifts to make a contribution to others, your sacred work. What would you say is that you consider your vocation? not your career, your vocation. Okay. Well, I've created my vocation and career now are one and the same. Wonderful. Expand on that. Okay. So um, career wise, I have taken parts of my career journey, leveraged that so that my vocation, my calling I can create the career I want from that. So I get to plan what my day looks like. I get to, there's so many things I get to. I get to Mm -hmm. choose with whom I work with. I get to choose if somebody I met four years ago randomly calls me up and says, will you be interviewed by me? I get to say yes. I don't get to clear. I don't, I'm not in a place where I I need to clear it with anybody. I am in the driver's seat of my own life right now. Right. Right. What did you have? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. What I was going to ask is, is that what did it take for you to finally get into that driver's seat? Oh my gosh. So this year I turned 62. Probably I was approaching 60. I thought, okay, if I don't really commit to myself now, none of us have a crystal ball of what's ahead. But really, I think my age really was the kick in my behind to say, it's go time. Mm -hmm. It's go time. Right. And tell us a little bit about what you've been doing now with Twirl. Okay. So. Twirl is a domestic manufacturer of patient apparel made out of fabric that is green. So it's recycled plastic bottles. So my first career, recovering environmental attorney. So my commitment to the environment, I'm passionate about. I 
strongly believe in domestic manufacturing. I, because I think we can bring back to the United States manufacturing. That's just another commitment I have. The last piece, patient apparel and twirls vision has always been comfort and dignity through life cycle events. As an entrepreneur gets to be flexible. And so when we shifted from a gift line that supported life cycle events, because we had been talking to nurses and they asked, we, we would like, could you manufacture front closing patient gowns? Can you manufacture labor and delivery tops and skirts? Being a domestic manufacturer, I could say yes. Both of the gift line and the patient apparel is for dignity and comfort and care through life cycle events. So I'm still with my vision of supporting through life cycle events. And now instead of gifts, we're working with healthcare system and healthcare providers. And um, the gift line was so inspired by friends and my parents going through health issues that when it was brought to my attention that the patient apparel gets to be redesigned. So it feels like patient centric experience in the hospital. I was all over that. So that's, that's where we are now. Uh, I do remember seeing uh, one of your your prototypes when you were first starting that, and I just thought that that was such a wonderful thing. I wish I had had that when I was going through my pregnancy and I had to get a uh, C section, and and that the apparel that you had would have been so comfortable, so much more, as you said, dignity. Because you 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 when you're in that situation, you you kind of just have to let it go and. But, but if you don't have to, um, what you provide and for others, it sounds like you're now providing for other patients, not just maternity line. Correct. So, mm-hmm. yes. So we also have a front closing gown with pockets. We didn't even realize how <sighs> value added pockets are. But if you pockets. think about it, if you're in a hospital and you're ambulatory, when you leave your room, we're now all so attached to our cell devices where do you put it so that there's pocket and so if you look at when the backward facing gowns and i say jokingly they're ass backwards they were designed for they were literally designed in the late 1800s for rectal thermometers for rectal thermometers oh my there gosh has, <laughs> there has not been an update to the design since the late 1800s and now we have touch free thermometers Mm-hmm. Right now, so many healthcare systems still utilize the backward facing gowns. If you've been, you are issued one that faces backward as it's designed, and then another one to cover your derriere, which makes no sense. So there's waste in laundering, there's waste in um, inventory. So we offer now a front closing gown made out of recycled plastic bottles with pockets that we offer a five-year replacement guarantee. The standard issue gowns have a life of two to three years. And we just think this is a better way to go. And it's so funny because very, I don't want to say no healthcare providers, but it doesn't seem that the patient soft touches are really um invested in Mm -hmm. yes it's about the technology and we have the cutting edge diagnostics and we have this world-class practitioners but you don't hear we are really focused on the care that you receive right right Wow, I mean, I love that. Um, just again, the, the the approach that you're taking for, especially when you're saying that it, it the design especially hasn't been changed since the, since the 1800s, and the reason why that's not even used any longer, and uh, 
and and you're right about also the waste that's there with having if you do get two of them and the laundry and the uh, cloth and materials and all of that that has to be used up um no i love love the design and uh, of course we'll um uh, on the where we're going to put your information we'll definitely uh give your website there so people can okay. see these designs because they're amazing and and again it does bring back dignity for the patient where yep. you're in a place where sometimes you don't you you can't even speak for yourself um when you're we're in the hospital situation. So, so thank you for the work that you're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of the things that we all have is our own individualism, our, the expression of our own personality in anything that we do. I call it our special fairy dust. What would you consider to be your fairy dust and how do you express it? Okay. So actually I embodied it through a twirls tagline which is weaving lives together. I love to connect people together. Mm, yes, I love that. And um, through the global pandemic, I really saw how interdependent we are on one another globally now, right? Yes. So now that we know that we're living that way, why wouldn't we receive all the gifts that that has to bring into our lives. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. So, so, yeah, weaving lives together. It just, weaving it's just why. Yep. That's great. Yep. Okay. So um, then back to then the higher purpose. And it sounds like you're interweaving um, that with your vocation, with your career. And uh, again, higher purpose is defined as a meaningful reason to live and money is not part of the equation. So how do you answer that when you ask what is your higher purpose? Um, and is it important to have it to have a successful career? Well, yeah. And, and first of all, we can all define how we want to define success. And, and I'm not bashful about saying, I'm in this to create wealth, financial wealth. I think women often shy away from being bold and saying that. Mm -hmm. I want to create foundational wealth. I want to generational wealth. I, I want it all. I mean, I'm not here just to have a lemonade stand. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's not your charity. It, no, That's where we get no. a mistaken. It's not our charity if we're having right. our own business. Yes. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that I don't see the value of other career choices that don't have that component. That's not what I'm saying at all. But for me, it includes that. So um, now I lost track of what your question was. <laughs> no, but it's a great point. It really is. Because one, uh, again, women, or, or, well, others, we such as will mistake the business for the charity and it's like, no, it's not one. Let's be really frank. If you started your business, it is to create that financial freedom so, so that you are able to support and help others. So, so basically uh, back to, to the question was more of what would you consider your higher purpose? Um, okay, you got it, okay. So it's all about legacy, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, that's, that's it, it's legacy and the impact that I want to create in the world. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Well, great. Yeah. So um, we have had, um, I think it, as, especially if you're starting your own business or even in just in your career in general, there are sometimes those inner blocks, that negative talk that hold us back or are still holding us back. What would you consider yours to have been or are still are your inner blocks? Oh. Yeah, what makes you think you can do this? Mm -hmm. I get that all the time. Mm -hmm. So I just like, well, so what makes me think I can't? I mean, I just take the opposite of that. And um, here's another space that I've recently got into. Historically, business has been built from a linear perspective that you do this step and then this step, then this step. I think we're in a place in our world where quantum steps are being made. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So it's not that um, one year you have output of X and then you have a thousand and then you have 10,000. I'm playing in the space that I have output of X and my next step will be 10,000 fold. So, yeah, so there's no reason why we have to remain linear, even though that's how we were taught to think, right? Right. And I'm learning that the linear thought has masculine, I'm doing air quotes, masculine energy around it. And the quantum trajectory is more of a feminine way of viewing things. So I am all over exploring more of the feminine way of moving things forward because we all have been there cooking dinner, helping with homework, tending to the pets, and it all happens at the same time and dinner still gets served. And all these other things have happened. We were trained to approach things in a multi-dimensional way. So why can't we apply that to our businesses too? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have been also on that path of finding that feminine power, tapping into that and and moving towards uh, away from some of that masculine energy, as you mentioned, um, because it fits so much better for especially the way I am that but I noticed that in some of the the language or some of the work that I was doing it was very much very masculine driven that that energy that I had to adjust and move and and uh, it's beautiful and, and I know yeah so, so yeah. Good. I'm glad yeah, that you mentioned it, it yeah and then on the what I want to adapt is the masculine energy about creating wealth mm-hmm. because men generally are not demure about yes. declaring that absolutely so, yes yeah, so so yes yeah, so I just wanted to come full circle on that point I love that okay. yes absolutely okay. so um, you've you know you've had three different careers and uh, now you're in your in this the what you're in with especially with twirl um and we all know that every now and then it's not always rainbows and daisies now. <laughs> so what do you do when you are stressed or overwhelmed? Okay. So really reconnecting with my vision. Because if I still can light up about the vision, that keeps me going. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean at three o'clock in the morning, I will, uh, maybe every once in a while I wake up and go, what am I doing? <laughs> and then I, I can take like three deep breaths, connect to my vision and get back on the path again. That's yeah. great. That's so great. that's, that's what I do. Yeah. Love that. So reconnecting with the vision. Mm-hmm. Great. And uh, what is something that you were told that you believed and it had a profound impact on you, but it was just not true? Yeah. To not be so much. Hmm. Okay. Well, too much, too much, too loud, too this, too that. And I bought into it. So I'm of the age that I was raised to be a nice girl, which to me translated into not claiming the limelight. Mm. Now, there were certain things, oh my gosh, if I got A's and spelling beads or if I were class president, but there was definitely a level there. Don't go past that. So what did you do to get past that? Or are you still working on that? I'm still working on that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. It's sometimes ingrained in you. It, you know, with whatever it is that we're working through, it's sometimes ingrained that it's every day. It's just a baby steps trying to get through or getting past it. Or rec- sometimes it's just really that awareness of yes. recognizing yeah, I know what I'm doing here. Okay. Right. Or, right. or really listening to who's telling you you're too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you like just listening? And it's fascinating who those people are versus who say, keep going. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And isn't it better to have those who are going to lift us up 
surround us more so than the naysayers, the ones who are going to question, because it's really sometimes their fears that they're projecting. Right, right. I mean, I remember those grade school teachers that just saw, like really saw me, you know? And so, okay, so you're in third grade, but if you want to read this book, go for it, right? I mean, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. We all need those those who see us more until they have a vision for us, and then we finally get and catch up to that vision, or even right. go past it. Right. Um, well, but it, they really they really see our vision that we may not even be connected to, and they remind us of what our vision is for ourselves, and yes. so we get to stretch into that. Mm -hmm. which is great. It's always wonderful yeah. to have just those, those people around us. that you are just like, oh, thank goodness. Yes, absolutely. Before we continue with the interview, I wanted to make sure you know that I'm here to help if you find yourself at a career crossroad and need support to determine your next path. I invite you to get a free career upgrade audit. This assessment is a personalized and comprehensive report to help you in getting clarity on where you are and where you want to go. Additional information below. Please make sure to like and subscribe the channel. Now back to our wonderful guest. So what is something that you deeply yearn for that you're still on the journey to attain? Probably that family and work balance. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm truly left to my own devices, I can keep the business. And because I'm an entrepreneur, there's always something to do, right? Yes. Or there's always an inspiration to follow up on. And I now we now have three beautiful grandchildren. And you know, I, I want to enjoy my husband and I are still very active. And of course I want to do those things. So how do, how do I manifest more minutes in a day? <laughs> so that's, that's what, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's so that's it. what your story. Yeah. Yeah. So finding more of that balance for yourself. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what is it, what advice would you give to someone who is on that fork in the road of trying to figure out what they're going to do with, with their career? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I did a workshop last summer that was entitled basically the intention of the workshop was to call people forward to create more memories and have less dreams. Mm -hmm. So that meant don't die with more memories and fewer dreams, meaning that you turned your dreams into memories. Yes, yes. So I did some research about when we were 10, tap back into when we were 10 and explore all the things you said you wanted to do. And there might be keys to direct you where you get to go with your career. So yes. let's, and it could be, but it can be really for any dimension. So whether it was, I wanted to be an astronaut. So go take classes in that and see what you can still do in that arena. Or it could be I really wanted to be a world traveler and you wanted to learn French, but you just never had that. So because I just have witnessed over and over again, whatever is your heart's desire, truly you can turn into your business. Mm. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I, I'm glad that you mentioned that where at, at the, when you're a kid, sometimes what you are really good at manifests itself at that point when you're where you're there. Um, I take also uh, I, my clients through this this process where we go deep down in when you're a kid and looking and finding those words and what made you the most happiest at that point that you really just really 
lifted others up and lifted yourself and you were excited about it. And it's so interesting to see how um, we'll have people who will figure out, wow, I should be doing this or determining this by, by just looking to see, you know, you probably knew way back then what you really, really love to do. I know, right. Because when we are in alignment with our true calling, we get to create magic. Yes. We really do. And why would we want to deprive the world of those gifts that we have to share? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And so what is something that you are most excited about your future right now? In any arena or just? In any arena. It could okay. be personal or wherever. Okay. Well, actually right now it's, it's business. I mean, what comes okay. up because, um, so we have one child and she moved back to our hometown during COVID and I never fought <laughs> her daughter <laughs> and her family would be five minutes away. So oh. I feel like, oh my gosh, I, I just, I still pinch myself that that has manifested. Oh. However, on from a business perspective, I really want to take Twirl International. I really do. And that has me very lit up. That is very, very lit up. That's yeah. exciting. It's exciting. Well, that um I feel like, again, so exciting just to see where you've been because we met um, at a conference <laughs> and uh, we just hung out for that weekend, right? We hung out and, and you just, I really connected with you and, and, and it was really fun to see that. And we've been Facebook friends since. I love yes. that about um, the yes. face, Facebook being part of that journey. But to see and hear that you are taking what was at that point your prototype right I mean at that point to to see that where it's moving and going and and I love that when COVID hit you also did uh an about and and worked on getting masks out that you worked with nurses that were and I remember ordering some from you yes yes I was going to acknowledge your support (laughs) you're welcome yeah yeah and so what's another funny theme that's come up so when I was in law school in my study group they were all nurses working on their second career. And then for Twirl, my partnerships with nurses on developing products. And it was just recently that I made that realization that I have always been attracted to how nurses show up, right? I mean, I sourced them in law school and now I'm working with them on product development and it's that's yeah that's so. exciting that is exciting yeah. well i appreciate you being here and being part of this this inspiring women series um i'm excited to have been able to reconnect with you again through this and thank you so much and um any other last comments or anything that you might have for for those who are who stumble upon this and listen you know i will go back to who would have thought when we first met what possibilities, how we could serve and support one another. So I guess the one thing is don't lose those magical connections because they were presented for a reason and you get to figure out what they were. Absolutely. I love that. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. This is so wonderful. Um, So again, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. I look forward to seeing your series.